Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today we're going to continue our class on system analysis and design where we're going to start a new phase of the SDLC which is, fa which is phase 3, the analysis process number 1 with the introduction to data flow diagram. Before I continue, let us refresh our memories on the previous topic. We have discussed the information gathering process where we learned that there are two ways for system analysts to gather information or requirement regarding their project. The first is the interactive method where we have discussed interview, JAD and questionnaires. And the second method is unobtrusive method where we have discussed sampling, investigation and observation. At the end of this process, we should be able to understand how business users accomplish their work and most importantly, we should know all the business functions and this includes getting information on the people, goal, data and the procedure involved. To review back the SDLC, the seven phases as discussed in topic one, we have discussed the first phase which is identifying problem, opportunities and objective. We also have discussed phase two as mentioned in the previous slide where we should be able to determine human information requirement. And today we're going to discuss phase three, analyzing system needs, where one of the activity is to create data flow diagram, which will be the focus on this topic. The objective of this topic first is to make sure everyone understands the importance of using logical and physical data flow diagram to graphically represent movement for humans and systems in an organization. Then, students should be able to create, use and explore logical DFD to capture and analyze the current system through parents and child level. The third objective to develop and explode logical DFDs that illustrate the purpose of the system. Fourth objective, students should be able to produce physical DFDs based on logical DFDs that you have developed. And fifth, students should be able to understand and apply the concept of partitioning of physical DFDs. A brief overview about all the major projects where we will focus on four major topics. First is data flow diagram, second creating DFD, third logical and physical DFD and last major topic is partitioning. All these major topics will be divided into smaller videos where part one will be consists of the first major topic. Creating DFDs will be, in, will be divided into two major videos, part one and part two. Logical and physical DFD will also be represented in two videos, which is part four and part five. And lastly, partitioning will be discussed in part six videos. So part one, where we will discuss what is DFD and also DFD symbols. So what is a data flow diagram? When system analysts attempts to understand the information requirement of a user, they must be able to conceptualize how data move through the organization, through system inputs, the process or transformation that the data undergo and what are the outputs. Through techniques that we have discussed in phase two, which is interviews and the investigation of data provided by the system user, we should be able to visualize the concept of information for the user and also the analyst in a very useful way. Through a structured analysis technique called DFD, a system analyst can put together a graphical representation of data processes throughout an organization. 
There are four main advantages of a data flow diagram. First, freedom from committing to the technical implementation too early means that in order for us to understand the system itself, we should be able to design or to illustrate the system as how we understand it without considering what are the technical aspects of the development. Second, to understand the interrelatedness of a system and subsystem. Third, communicating current system knowledge to users. Fourth, analysis of the proposed system in order for us to know how the system is going to be developed. There are four basic symbols that are used to chart data movement on data flow diagram, which is the entity, the data flow, the process, and also the data store. We will discuss this in detail in the next slides. The double square is used to depict an external entity, which can be representing another department, a business, a person, or a machine. An entity is used to send data or receive data from the system, and we can also call it as an entity. It is also the source or destination of a data, and it is considered to be external to, this, to the system that is being described. Each entity is labeled with an appropriate name, where it should be named as a noun. The same entity may be used more than once on a given data flow diagram to avoid crossing data flow lines. The second symbol is the data flow symbol, where the arrow shows movement of data from one point to another, with the head of the arrow pointing toward the system destination. The data flow occurring simultaneously can be depicted just by doing or by representing it on a parallel arrows. Because an arrow represents data about a person, place, a thing, so it should also be described using a noun. There are two main ways for us to this to show our data flow diagram with the name. The first one is by representing all of the data that is needed in that process and you should list out together with the arrow. Or you can also simplify it just by giving a name on the process but you also need to identify what are the data or what are the information that is um, included in the data flow name. Okay, for example, if you name your data flow as student information, you must also list out what are the list of data that is um, included in the student information data flow, such as student ID, student name, student course, student address, and student form, phone. We use this um, just to make sure that the arrow name is not being uh, included with too many names or, or not, then your data flow, uh, data flow symbol would be a bit messy. The next symbol is the process symbol, where it is represented with a rectangle with rounded corners that is used to show the occurrence of a transforming a process. A process also always represents a change in or transformation of the data. Hence, each process will need a data flow that is leaving from a process or entering the process. Process also represents work that is being performed in the system and it should be named by one of the following format. When we wanted to assign a name of the whole process in a higher level process, we should name it as the process num itself. Okay, as you can see here, this is what we call as a higher 
level process where we should name the process as the system name instead of okay the second one is to name a major subsystem that is attached to the word subsystem in the process itself and the third one is to use in the form of verb adjective noun or verb noun for a more detailed process okay for an example if you have a process that will send an email to a customer then you can name the process as send customer email confirmation where send is a type of verb the adjective or the one that will receive the email is the customer and the noun on what we want to send is email confirmation or you can also put the process name as send email which consists of verb and also the noun a process must also be given a unique identifying numbers as you can see here that indicates its level in the diagram we will discuss this later in in the next video several data flow may go into and out of the process the next symbol is the data store symbol where it is represented by an open-ended rectangle which represents the data store itself these symbols are drawn only wide enough to allow us to identify what are the name of the system in the parallel lines in a logical data flow diagram, the type of physical storage is not specified. At this point, the data store symbol is simply showing a depository for data that allows checking, addition or retrieval of a data. The data store may represent a manual store, such as a filing cabinet or a computer's file or a database itself. Because the data store represents a person, place a thing they are also being named with a noun okay as an example each data store also should be given a unique reference number such as d1 d2 d3 and so on so these are the four basic symbol of a data flow diagram where it will represent an entity the data flow the process and the data store by this time, you should be able to understand what does each of the symbol represents and how we name or how we describe each of the entity, the data flow, the process, and a data store. Okay, that's it for part one of data flow introduction to data flow diagram. I'll see you in the next part. Thank you.